Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use my Perception AB plugin to get immediate feedback on the processing that you're using in your mix every day. Does it really sound better, or is it just a little bit louder? We've all had this problem. Even the simplest vocal chain probably includes some EQ, some compression, a de maybe some saturation or tape emulation or something else to give it some flavour. And we do those things because they make it sound better. But when you get to the stage where you want to double check and make a comparison between the before and the after sound, just to make sure it's having the effect that you hope it is, that can be a real challenge. It may not be possible to disable all the processing in your channel strip in one go, and even if that is possible, it could be that the sound gets interrupted or there's a small dropout or hesitation when you do it. But most importantly, there's almost certainly going to be a change in the loudness. Almost everything we do in mixing causes some kind of change in loudness. And that can be a problem because our ears are so sensitive to loudness. Even a very small change in loudness can override our ability to accurately hear the more subtle details that we're really interested in when we do this kind of comparison. This is something that I call the loudness deception. And that's where Perception AB comes in. It allows you to make real-time, loudness-matched, latency-compensated before and after pre- and post comparisons for any audio chain, including external analog hardware. So you simply add it into your mix in the channel that you're interested in, click a couple of buttons, and you can do a seamless pre-post comparison to hear the difference that your processing is making without being confused by the change in loudness. And that's invaluable because it allows you to make a real objective decision about whether what you've done really does sound better or just louder. So let's take a look at how it works. So this is a mix I did for my good friend Dan Ecclestone and his band Ember Rev. It's pop, folk, progressive, indie, something, maybe. <laughs> um, I really like it. Uh, it has a ton of unusual acoustic instruments. It's got acoustic bass, it's got harmonium, it's got prepared piano, it's got ukuleles. And hopefully it should be really easy for you to hear what's going on. So I'm going to start by quickly showing you how Perception AB can be helpful, and then I'll dig into some of the details in a bit more depth for you. So first of all, I'll just play you a bit at the end of this so you can hear how it sounds. And I mentioned that it has acoustic bass, which has a pretty radical EQ curve on it. And also there's a big change in volume. So I, I could bypass both plugins in Logic, but they don't all go into bypass at the same time. And there's almost always a blip in the audio as well as that change in level. So instead I'm going to use perception. So I start by putting in a pre instance at the beginning of the chain. That's the before processing part of the audio. And then I put in a post instance at the end of the chain. There are two types. Postmaster is for mastering projects and post channel is for an example like this where it's part of a mix. And if I hit play, you'll see that the first thing the plugin does is calculate any latency that's present on that channel. And while it does, it's muted. And that will work for an external analog effects chain as well as an in-box project. It will calculate any delay from the converters for you so that you can do a seamless bypass. Some DAWs will do that as soon as you insert the plugin. Others, like Logic, wait for you to hit play. And in this case, we can see that there's no compensation needed. And if I just solo the channel and play again, you can hear that we can now switch between the pre and post audio. But of course, there's a big difference in loudness. And this actually measures the figures for us. The post loudness is minus six LUFS, the pre loudness is minus 19.5. Uh, if minus six seems very loud, don't worry, you can see that the channel fader is way down, so it doesn't end up that, that loud in the final mix. So now we can match the level, and then when we switch,
there's no change in loudness. The only changes we're hearing are due to the EQ and the compression that I've applied. That's helpful, but what's even more helpful is being able to do that within the context of the mix. You can hear that that processing is having exactly the effect that I wanted. The bass is richer and deeper, but it also is clearer in the mix. Uh, it's less consistent without the compression. The EQ is making it fit in much better, so I'm happy. Having done that, we can now move on and do the same thing for the next channel, which is the slightly distorted ukulele. Um, so we'll make that a pre-instance as well, and then we'll put a post-channel instance in afterwards and hit play and again it will sync and then we can match the level and do a seamless bypass of that as well this is the post signal And you can hear that's really useful because I'm using the Waves Abbey Road ADT plugin to add some stereo interest to that, which also factors into our perception of the loudness. And we could carry on adding another ukulele part into the equation. Now, the really nice thing is that we can actually bypass all of those simultaneously using the bypass all function. And more importantly, we can do that within the context of the mix. So if I unsolo those, we can hear that all the processing I've done there is working exactly as I'd hoped. Even when the loudness is matched, the processing I've done gets me a better result than the loudness on its own. So it gives you instant objective feedback on whether the changes you're making are valuable. You can even add perception to a whole group of channels at one time. If I select all of those channels here and hold down shift while I select pre, all of those new instances will be pre instances and all of these Again, holding down shift, all of these can be post-channel instances. And that means you can actually bypass your entire mix with a single click. Loudness compensated. latency compensated, including external analog hardware, seamless A-B comparisons. So let's just look at some of this in a little bit more detail. You can see here that the piano track has been matched in level so that both the pre and the post are approximately minus 14 LUFS. And down here we can see that that means that a gain increase of 2.2 dB has been applied to the pre signal. So the version before all the processing has been lifted up by 2 dBs to match more closely the audio after all of the processing. Now we can clear those values if we would like, in which case this is restored back to its original loudness. And we can also refresh the values there to get a new estimate of the overall loudness. For example, if we move from a louder to a quieter section of the song. The values update continuously. So over time, they get more and more accurate for the section of audio that you've been previewing. But if there's a big change in loudness, uh, it might be worth refreshing. And the shift key can be useful here as well. If we hold it down, it allows us to match the level of all of the clips simultaneously, or also refresh all the loudness values in the project simultaneously, or clear all the currently applied values as well. I'll just demonstrate that quickly. Yeah. 
So that's with the loudness match applied. If I clear those adjustments and do the bypass all again. You can hear that big difference in loudness, but if I then rematch them all, we're back to doing a matched loudness comparison. Now, because the pre loudness is being lifted up to match the post loudness to make sure we don't hear any changes in the mix when we toggle between them, it is possible that the gain boost that you're seeing here might result in some clipping. Chances are when you're mixing that will just be on the channel fader and since modern DAWs are 32-bit floating point that's not a big deal. But if you do see any clipping on the master output fader you might decide that you want to pull back the main output level to prevent that. You can also choose to match the loudness with the pre values in which case the post loudness will be turned down to match whatever the pre-loudness was. That can be useful in the early stages of a mix when you don't have a full mix going yet or if you're very concerned to avoid clipping. And there's also the ability to match to a specified reference level uh, which is mainly used for mastering. The sync value for each plugin is displayed in the interface. Let's take uh, something like the vocal channel here where we've got more, more processing. So you can see we've got 19 milliseconds of latency on that channel and you can trigger a recalculation of that sync at any time just by clicking the button. That might be necessary if you add or remove plugins that change the latency of the channel that you're working on, for example. We found a few rare instances where the automatic latency detection isn't successful. Um, in that case, you can edit these values by hand if necessary. And then the final thing to show you in the interface here is the display here of which pre instance is being monitored by which post instance. Every new post instance you add will automatically link up with the last pre instance you added. So if you're systematic about the way that you add them, then you're unlikely to need to adjust these numbers. But if necessary, you can select the next available instance. And for the same reason, if you're adding instances to multiple channels using the bulk insert features, then it's important to make sure you instantiate both sets of plugins on the same channels so that the DAW can keep track of which instance is connected to which. You need to have a matched pair of pre and post instances on each channel when you're using Perception AB in mixing, but you can be creative about where those are placed. You could put them on individual instrument channels, you can put them on stereo bus channels as I have here with the drums, you could even choose to put them around just a single piece of processing. So if you want to know how the compression only is influencing the sound of a particular channel, then you would just need to put one before and after the compressor in your chain and exclude the EQ or any other processing. And if you have any kind of stereo mix bus processing, you can use another pre and post pair there as well. And you can toggle the loudness of that individually or bypass everything just as you do with the rest of the channels in the mix. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how Perception AB might be helpful for you when you're working on your own mixes. It was originally developed as a mastering plugin and one of the first questions that we got from users was can we use it in the mix? Back then the answer was no not really but now the answer is yes absolutely and to this day, it still amazes me how powerful this simple idea of matched loudness is. Loudness differences of as little as half a dB can completely change our opinion of the processing we're using. And that means that we might be missing out on an opportunity or doing extra processing that actually wasn't beneficial and we'd have been better off doing a straight gain change instead. Perception gives you real-time immediate feedback to help you make those kind of tough decisions for yourself. And I'm confident that if you give it a try, you'll find it's an invaluable part of your mixing workflow. So there you go. I hope that was useful or interesting. To find out more about Perception AB, including how it can be used in mastering as well as mixing and why you might want to do that, head over to meterplugs.com. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.